we have a little friend here as well on set he because we're going to go to that story now. A little saintly and a little naughty, unlike Dan. You know, I'm a dog person. <laughs> and I heard great things about a group of very special dog trainers in Cambridge, New York. The monks of New Skeet Monastery have been breeding dogs and training them for more than 40 years. Take a look. They are the sounds of true devotion. The ringing bells. The calls to prayer. And the silence. Here, nestled in the woods of upstate New York, these monks have two callings. One to the big man above, and one to these little guys below. Come on, puppies. Let's go. The monks of New Skeet are the true dog whisperers. Owners across the country send their dogs here to be converted from unruly rascals to heavenly saints. I need to be focused on that dog in, uh, in a singular way. And so it demands that dog calls out in that moment my skills as a trainer. I try and respond to what the circumstances uh, call for. The brother's special bond with man's best friend dates back some 40 years when a German shepherd by the name of Kier moved into the monastery. They soon learned that the skills that make them such good monks, patience and perseverance, hey. also make them good trainers. Okay, this is Mochi, who's been here uh, approximately two and a half weeks. She came in because she was just all puppy. Okay, the owners had no control over her. The brothers have been working with her to learn to calm down and obey, sitting, standing, and lying down. Yes, that, I want her to walk politely on leash first. Way to go, Mochi. Very good. Now the true test of how much this irrepressible puppy has learned. I want to take Mochi home with me. It was my turn to put Mochi through her paces. What we're doing is testing her responsiveness to someone who she's never met. Mochi, sit. Good girl. And scratch. Mochi, down. And watch Good. this. Okay. Mochi doesn't even blink. When her owners come to pick her up, they'll find a dog transformed. And what's usually the first thing you hear out of the owner's mouth when he comes back three weeks later? That's not my dog. <laughs> That's not my dog. But it is my dog, and I'm delighted. Here, the monks also breed these immaculate pups, German shepherds, their specialty. So well trained that there's a waiting list for years. This is the best part of my day. Okay, you can hold. Oh, you're precious. Oh, yes. How is this not the most adorable creature in the world? This little girl, just about seven weeks old, is only one week away from going to her new owner. I got to tell you, you're going to be frisked before you leave to make sure that, <laughs> that you I don't have in your knapsack me. or uh, I don't know what you know, you're talking that. about. I've only spent an afternoon here, but I'm already feeling the tug of taking one of these little ones home. Oh, but she is just too cute. Well, I think that people, regardless of their religious backgrounds, sort of intuitively sense a spiritual connection with their dogs. That's why dogs are man's best friend. And Brother Christopher joins us now. He and the monks of New Skeet wrote The Art of Raising a Puppy, an expanded and revised edition of their original bestseller. That's coming out soon. I but, got a live one here. What do you advise? We've got three animals here from the Humane well, Society. What you want to do is to hold him, just uh -huh. pick him up and yeah. hold him. Yeah. And he's going to be a little bit wiggly. Oh, but then just pet him. Look at how just. still yours is, though. And, and, and this, is, this is the art that you've developed this relationship between animals and the spirituality. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, the monastery has been working with dogs for 40 years, and one of the things that we've continued to, to find is dogs have the possibility of touching us on deep levels. And when we participate in the relationship with them, nurture it, uh, bring it to fruition, the human beings are enriched as well. And uh, it just seems that we've gotten some very important spiritual lessons out of our work with dogs. Yeah, a symbiotic relationship indeed. But for yeah, people yeah. who, who want to uh, buy a new puppy from you and they come in, what are the first tips that you give them as to how they can raise them to be obedient dogs? Well, the first thing is they're going to have to assume proper responsibility and leadership. Uh, we would suggest uh, preparing uh, to receive this new dog into their, uh, into their home reading a couple of books, perhaps uh, 
looking locally to see where they might get some help. Uh, but with that sort of a foundation, they can work daily with a dog to teach just basic ordinary manners like sit and stay and down. The idea is to use the training to include the dogs in your life. That's what you really want to do. Training isn't just simply teaching five or six it's about a relationship. Yeah, tips. It's about, it's about the relationship. The relationship. Right. Uh, training is a gateway to a deeper relationship with your dog. And we should note that your three-week training program is very vigorous and intense. They don't allow the owners to call their pets. They can't check in on them, but they say when they come yeah, back... Yeah, it's a little bit of canine boot camp. That's right. Uh, they, they come back new animals, right? They do. All right. Uh, thank you, brother. But, we really appreciate it. Thank you very okay. much for coming well, on. Well, thank you for inviting me on. It's a pleasure it's, to have it's you. It's a delight to be here. And it's a... Oh! And there's Maynard. There's Maynard.